For the people who live around here, the hopes are that with Friday's launch, the space shuttle and everything else will go straight up. In nearby Brevard County, during the Apollo heyday, population increased tenfold. Ten schools were built in a year, with names reflecting the times. With the end of the Apollo program, the boom went bust. People moved away. There was a 40% vacancy rate. But community leaders learned an important lesson. Not to plant all our cabbage in one patch, but to, and not to be totally dependent upon the space center and the space program. Golfer Lee Trevino is a product of the community's drive to diversify. His name is on a major golf club and housing development under construction in Titusville. A two and a half million dollar industrial park is being built to attract the companies who are potential users of the shuttle. And it's hoped this time the boom will last. The hard times are over, let the good times roll. So a successful launch not only means a giant step forward for the space program, but also a tremendous lift to an area which hasn't been flying so high in years. Rebecca Chase, ABC News, Kennedy Space. Everyone, live pictures from Cape Canaveral this morning where preparations are underway for the launching of the Space Shuttle Columbia and just offshore there, some rehearsals for something they hope won't happen. If there is some kind of an abortion of the flight, then there's a possibility that the Columbia could land in the water and this morning they're going through some rescue drills just in case things work out that way. Countdown is proceeding toward a scheduled launch Friday morning after minor repair work was completed last night. This evening on ABC's World News Tonight, science editor Jules Bergman continues his special assignment series on the space shuttle. Tonight he'll focus on the role of politics and budget cutting on the shuttle's long road to the launch pad. That's new. the space we go. A quarter after eight, Friday is the scheduled launch date for the Space Shuttle Columbia. For years now, uh, the real unsung heroes of our space program uh, have been the test pilots. Uh, they are the men who literally have risked their lives to test uh, our space technology in all the early stages of development. And recently, uh, Steve Fox for Good Morning America visited one of our country's top test pilot training centers. Watch. <laughs> Edwards Air Force Base, 300,000 acres on the western edge of the Mojave Desert in California, where military pilots have been testing high-performance planes for almost 40 years. Out of the Air Force Flight Test Center here at Edwards have come many of the pilots and much of the aerospace technology that makes space flight possible. Traditionally, both machines and men have been tested here to judge whether they are worthy of going into outer space. Since 1942, all manner of experimental aircraft have been tested here, including this plane, America's first jet. The legendary Flying Wing was put through its paces at Edwards, as was the so-called Parasite Fighter, and the first supersonic bomber, the Valkyrie, plus the controversial B-1 bomber. The so-called wingless lifting bodies were proven airworthy here, and their design later used on the Space Shuttle, which made its first test landing at Edwards. One of the most memorable test flights here happened in 1947, when Chuck Yeager broke the once feared sound barrier in the X-1 rocket plane. Many flyers consider Yeager, now a retired Air Force Brigadier General, America's greatest test pilot. I got a big charge out of it because it was interesting, and it was thrilling to be flying an airplane in an air where it had never been formed before. You really don't have to be good to be famous as a test pilot. All you got to do is survive. <laughs> According to both General Yeager and this man, Colonel Pete Knight, the keys to surviving as a test pilot are luck and learning. Knight is one of a handful of test pilot astronauts, earning that title back in 1967 by flying the X-15 67 miles into the atmosphere while setting a world speed record of 4,520 miles per hour. Well, test flying is a, is a tremendous challenge. Uh, it's a challenge uh, between you and the machine. Uh, it's a challenge between you and knowledge of uh, the various systems that go to make up that machine. The only way you can become a test pilot is to test airplanes and to have enough experience that when something new comes along, you can cope with it. Test pilots have long been stereotyped as hardworking, hard-playing daredevils, fearless men who challenge the heavens during the day after partying throughout the night. But Jaeger insists that image is largely false. A guy who tests airplanes, uh, 
he likes his neck as well as anybody else does, and he's going to take care of it. And you, you can't hoot with the owls all night and fly with the eagles all day. It just don't work that way. The new breed of test pilots coming out of the Air Force School at Edwards today is different than the legendary old-timers, mainly because much more technical expertise is required since the planes are more sophisticated. The men spend 46 weeks at the school, most of the time, 630 hours, in classrooms learning theory. They also get 133 hours of flying time, starting in gliders, where they go through so-called spin tests. The gliders are purposefully put out of control, and the students learn how to take down data for tests while also pulling the gliders out of the spins. Part of the purpose for this is to teach them not to panic under pressure. The head of the test pilot school says that modern test pilots share one important trait with the old timers. Courage. They're the kinds of guys that enjoy going up and looking over the edge of a frontier and seeing what's there uh, and figuring out a way to get down in it and do something with it. Test pilots are also very competitive. Uh, they're competing for their life on a daily basis uh, and they're competing to be, be good at what they do, uh, not at somebody else's expense, but uh, sometimes, a lot of times, the competition's with themselves. I did that well this time, I want to do it perfectly next time. And we push hard to, to get guys competing with themselves or with other people so that they can push themselves again to further limits than they thought they were capable of doing. To get a sense of what the pilots go through, I went up with Colonel Madonna in a T-38 jet trainer. Now, I've got to admit that I was more than a little worried before we took off. But once we got airborne, my fear went away and was replaced, alternately, by exhilaration when we broke the sound barrier at 739 miles per hour, and by nausea when we put the plane into a steep landing approach, and I felt four and a half G-forces pushing on my body. Altogether, it was a thrilling experience, but one I'm glad I don't have to undergo every day for a living. I feel much better being on the ground, I'm going to tell you the truth, I'm not going to lie to you. Unfortunately, not all flights at Edwards are as uneventful as mine. Although the school has a good safety record, with 46 deaths in 30 years, tragedies are inevitable in this line of work. Just a few weeks before we visited, three students had been killed in a crash. I've been in this business for 22 years, and uh, uh, the, the first one was the worst one, and they've gotten worse since. Uh, you'd like to never have that happen, uh, but... It does, and you have to accept it. You've got to accept it. It's part of the way we do business. But despite the undeniable risks, test pilots continue to try to extend their own limits and the limits of aviation, and many of them continue to dream of becoming the ultimate test pilot, the space shuttle astronaut. All of our activities in space thus far have been, uh, each one is a pioneer flight, uh, so that, that they're always on the threshold. The, the test enthusiasm and the, the frontier that they're working at all the time in space uh, is what I think what attracts test pilots to get into the space program. Ultimately, it seems that the quality that makes a great test pilot is not just courage, but also intense curiosity. Curiosity so profound that it causes them to face a fearful challenge, learn everything they can about it, and so conquer danger with knowledge. And that same curiosity may be at the heart of the astronaut's desire to explore outer space. Oh, sensational. Steve Fox, Tom Ryder, working with Steve Fox, did that for us. How super. Uh, and by the way, Steve, on Friday, is going to take a look at our country's uh, new breed of astronauts. Uh, and that'll be on the day, of course, that the Space Shuttle Columbia takes off. And we will be there. Uh, for ABC. Down for the space shuttle is continuing and is actually a bit ahead of schedule after difficulties earlier this week. Launch is still scheduled for Friday. John Young and Robert Crippen arrived today ready to do the flying. More from Robert Bazell at the Cape. The two astronauts who will fly the space shuttle arrived at Patrick Air Force Base near Cape Canaveral this afternoon, each in his own training jet and both eager to get on with the mission. We're really looking forward to the flight, and we hope that everything will allow us to go on Friday. It sure looks good for that right now. The Columbia is in great shape, and the launch team tells us it's almost ready to go, so we're all looking forward.